Hello, Jared. How are you? How's it going, man? Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Again. Yeah. Second time I said that. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, worries. Where did we leave off? Uh, I was outside in the rain. You're outside in the rain. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, wreaked yeah. havoc on my hair. Dude. Right out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really I makes s- it uncontrollable. I've seen pictures on your Instagram when you had some wild hair dudes. Yeah, dude. I, had, uh, I got dreadlocks back in uh, junior year of high school. Whoa. And then for like four years, I had them down to like here. Really? Yeah. What prompted that? I always wanted them. Like yeah. I start, yeah, I started growing out my hair, and it was like I got the Jufro thing going. Nice. From my dad's side, I was picking it out, and I was like, you know what? I bet you I could do dreadlocks because I was kind of twist them up myself. Yeah. And then uh, I went to a couple of like bad uni- fish uni- concerts. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, I had my like incubus sublime moment yeah, back yeah, yeah. in the day, but I was more like I was doing graffiti. I was really into like underground hip hop and shit uh-huh. like that. Gotcha. Um, and then I was like, yeah, I want to get, I want to get dreadlocks. So my stepmom, she was dating my, my dad at the time. She was like, I know some like, uh, some like unisex hairstyle, like other side of the track kind of joints. Yeah. And I was like, sure. And I went to one in Long Branch, New Jersey and I walked in and it was all like black dudes with fatigues on. I was just like, what's up? Like, yeah, they were like, we're not doing your hair. <laughs> and, and then I, uh. And then I went to my hometown, Red Bank, and there was a place that twisted them up for me. Whoa, they did it for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's your hometown like? Is it a lot of white people that want dreads? No, no, no. <laughs> That'd be weird. Yeah. Like children of the corn, children of the dreads. Um, no, it's, I mean, now, like Red Bank right now is like one of the hottest small towns in okay. New Jersey. Yeah. Or like even in the country, it's like one of the, because it's got, it's real cute. It's, it's a nice town. When I was like, you know, like I was born there in 85. So like up until like my high school, it was like very eclectic. Like at it, I went to Red Bank Regional, which took like mainly kids from Little Silver, Shrewsbury, and Red Bank, and then a couple from neighboring towns. And the Red Bank group was always way more eclectic than mm. the kind of mostly white kids from all the other towns. Gotcha. So it was like you know it was it, it was wasn't, like the other side of the tracks. Kind yeah. Of well, town. it was just like you know it wasn't as like you know fucking white bread as mm. uh, as most of the surrounding towns yeah so, which was great growing up because it was like i wasn't awkward around people you know yeah like, where a lot of these kids like they had one black kid that went to school like, yeah. the whole time <laughs> yeah. and i'm like uh, i don't know man <laughs> yeah for sure thank god for that that's yeah. so important when you're a kid it really is I yeah because it, it first of all it it teaches you to not be ignorant to like other people's cultures and customs right and it you know you just you don't get weird around other, you know people that are like a, from a different you know ethnicity than you are yeah yeah so, yeah, yeah you don't ask like weird exactly weird yeah, questions yeah. can you jump higher than yeah, you know yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. whoa you know do a um, jig you yeah, dance? yeah yeah exactly <laughs> it's like uh yeah, but yeah. uh yeah so i mean red bank now is like it's expensive to live there they okay. kind of like they, they did they glossed it over a little bit but back at you know back in the early 90s mid 90s it was just like a it was a cool d- downtown area yeah Good record shops, places like that. Nice. So, yeah. So what what got you to not have the dreads anymore? Uh, you just got sick of them? I couldn't get a job. <laughs> um, I So it's funny. There was a pizza place in, in like the next town over, and I had dreadlocks. My, my buddy was uh, a delivery driver for them. And he was like, yo, we need a deliver, another delivery driver. So I went in there, dreadlocks and all. And uh, they were like, yeah, we're not hiring. And I was like, yo, Nick, they said they were hiring. He was like, I don't know, man. And then like a month later when I had cut them, just because I think it was just like a, it's a lot of maintenance for a look that doesn't look maintained. You know? Right, right, like, right. You can't, you can't get them wet because if they get wet, they can get moldy if they don't dry sure. properly. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, you know what? They were like, you know, like all kind of like interconnected and crazy. So I went, I, I cut it, I cut them off, I put them in Ziploc bags, and I, I saved them. <laughs> you whole, saved them? Yeah, for how dude. long did you save them? Uh, <laughs> a couple months. They made good, uh, yeah, they made good beer pong psych outs. I used to bring yeah. them out and like chew on them. <laughs> People would be like, uh, you know. Um, That's hilarious. But I went to the pizza place again, and they were like, yeah, you start Friday. And I was like, damn, you, got, you wow. don't even remember me, dude. So yeah, they totally... Which I get, dude. If I just showed up like, here's your pizza, you know, people would be like, did you eat anything? I feel like that would be on brand, though. Yeah. You know? Yeah, right? What kind of pizza? Like, I used to work at a pizzeria. 
It was a little. It was like the rich neighborhood. Uh, okay, so I think okay, that okay. They were worried about their clientele seeing a white boy with dreadlocks show up. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I used to work at a pizza place in high school. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, we were all underage, but the owner was like an Italian guy. Yeah. So we would all drink pretty much the whole time, including the delivery driver. Oh, I don't even want to talk about how much I drank when I was a delivery driver. Deliver me. <laughs> oh, dude. All, right. All, right, all right. We're back. We're oh, black yeah. still. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pizza, pizza shops. Working there as a kid. Yeah, dude, man. It's, you, it's, that's another thing that I feel like it was. I mean, it was integral. like an insulary, like a hang, you know, all the yeah. drivers were like pretty chill with each other. For sure. Definitely like some... You know, if there was a camera in the corner, it would make for a good, like, sitcom kind oh, of... Oh, hell yeah. I mean, we never did anything grimy or anything like that, but I for sure had a couple Jack and Cokes, and which is, you know, looking back, I'm like, I'm a fucking idiot, but, you know, you don't, you're invincible when you're fucking 19 years old. Yeah, like, yeah, when when uh, alcohol's not as accessible, you're yeah, like, I can yeah. get it at work, I get oh, paid to do this? Wa- yeah. This is fantastic. Yeah, if, like, I'd have, like, a good week, and next thing I know, like, like... Here's a fucking handle, or you know, a pint of Jack. I'm like, sweet. Uh, you know? Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. We used to have a guy's. He's actually been on the podcast before. His name's Flip. He's a DJ normally, but he would come in. He had the best job there, dude. Yeah. He would. He would. And it was a small operation anyway. But he would come in at like ten, like right before we opened, and he would start making dough until like two or three. Yeah. And he would just go in his car and get stoned <laughs> and drink all day. Like the boss would be like, "Hey, go get us a few nips." Yeah. It was. It was one of the best. We got paid under the table. It was fantastic. Yeah, there yeah. was yeah there was a dude that kind of did the same. He would run it from like open to close, and crush like a case of Bud Light. Oh hell yeah! And he looked like he was albino, like he was gray. And I was like, I was always like, oh, this guy's like fifty years old. They're like, no, he's like thirty nine. <laughs> I was like, what, dude? <laughs> His body is rejecting itself. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was just it was a wild dude. It was a cool time for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's how it is in the in the fucking food industry anyway. Yeah, man. I mean, you you are you're knee deep in that. Yeah, dude, for 10 yeah. years now. That's wild. Yeah. See kept managed to keep my head above water for the most part just cuz like the food service industry is like it, it, you see a lot of characters in there because really like at the end of the day they're like, "We'll hire you if you if you do the job." Yes. You know, it's not like, "Oh, can you do spreadsheets and, you know, what's your Excel situation?" Yeah. Like they're like can you show up every day? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like not. Can hurt, you put on hurt, a face hurt after hurt drinking or all others? Night? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you not spill boiling hot stuff on people? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. But yeah, man, I've definitely seen some like real interesting people throughout. Yeah, of, especially. Like, I rides. mean, you're you're a chef, so back of houses. Yeah. I've I've always served. Like I still okay, serve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a different game. Like serving is fucking nothing yeah it's nothing yeah comparatively <laughs> but you do have to put on that like i'm talking to people a little bit more of a customer service vibe right where like you keep the the gremlins in the back kind of thing and they they deal with their you know they're dealt with separately right um, yeah well that's what i've always that's like the trade-off yeah because the people who like who work in the back would rather either they don't speak english yes um, <laughs> or my spanish is amazing the, um, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah 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 or they just don't want to deal with the public i mean yeah i mean in like, that way it's it's you know 90 degrees crazy hectic stress fest yeah but you're like at least i don't have to deal with some you know for lack of a better term like a karen being oh, like my time. food's cold you know and like you know, oh, you know, groveling and and being like for that sure, kind of thing. yeah, 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 working working for tips, yeah, yeah, like exactly, like if if I don't put on a good face, I don't get money. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It um, it's watching a restaurant run during like a rush. Yeah, is one of the craziest things to witness. Yeah, it is wild. Everybody's just fucking. You you can't. It's funny how you don't mess up during a rush. Yeah, yeah. You, you're like it's like a, you don't have time you're on to. autopilot a little bit. Yeah, I I I would really like it because just the day would go by so fast. You know, five yes. hours go like that. Oh, it's the when best. you don't have time to think, and it is like you know it's it's super fulfilling. But that's where that whole 
reward system afterwards kind of kicks in and that's when you start drinking starting drinking at like two o'clock in the morning <laughs> right. and you know end up in k-town at a karaoke joint like 6 a.m does that happen like, oh yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely um, yeah but i i liked it because I, I i actually what what hooked me besides like anthony bourdain's kitchen confidential mm. and just the love of like putting things together and having people taste them uh, was going to work at 3 p.m. and getting out at 1 yes. a.m. You know, like, I'm yeah. not, I was never a morning person. I agree. For the longest time. Yeah. Uh, There's something cool about doing that. Yeah. I don't know why. It's, it's I, like I live at night. Yeah. Fuck, the fuck mentality you is like, <laughs> uh, like you day walking, like, you, yeah. like these, you know, you're, you're showing up while people are going home. Yeah. And that's, you know, you're like working under the cover of darkness. It's it's kind of dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I remember one time I I had a job. I had a couple different delivering jobs, not like pizza, mm -hmm. but like like I worked for a bakery and delivering bread and shit. And I would wake up Yeah. early, but it was like the cool early, like 4 in the morning, yeah, 3 yeah, yeah. in the morning. See, that's again like nobody's really out. Yeah. You know? It's like a yeah. whole cuz that I I noticed that like a lot of because I do, I do catering now, which is more of on a, like a normal, it can be a more normal uh, time frame. Sure. So all of a sudden, the the restaurant uh, group of friends, like you just lose touch because they're starting their day at 4 p.m. And you're like, oh, shit, I just got out from my nine to five prep shift, you know? Yeah. So it's different. Yeah. It is funny when you meet someone in like the restaurant industry that works like has a nine to five position. Yeah. Someone that is a prep or yeah. like a daytime bartender or something. It, it's weird. Cause sometimes you're like, it's, it's like two different squads, you know? Yeah. You can the tell them people in the squads. daytime is yeah. they fucking suck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they all They're suck. always like hopped up on like, you know, life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're too excited about things. Yeah. Like yeah. you, when I go to work, I know I'm going to make money when I instantly feel dread. Yes. As a server. Yes. You know, when I know, I like when I see ton, too many people in there, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. we're going to make money, but I'm going to want to kill somebody. Yeah, I used yeah. to, I used to, my first restaurant job in, in Manhattan was uh, in the uh, East Village at like a really popular uh, restaurant for like, you know, high society a little bit, like kind of a trendy restaurant. Yeah. And... It'd be like, oh man, there's 280 people in the books, which doesn't seem like a lot compared to like closer to Midtown. It would be like a 500 person night or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the level of cuisine is is elevated, so it's it's more at stake. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah. oh my god, constantly like. Just it's more like a shit. concentrated yeah. effort as opposed to like a big broad. Exactly. You get yeah. like two two turns, like they like turn the table twice, and. Uh, I worked rotisserie, so uh, I had this like, the meat man. Yeah, <laughs> hanging <Yeah>. meats <laughs> on this on this like we got this oven from France, this rotisserie oven, and it had like wicks with, that would have flame coming out the side of it. Yeah, that was like head level, so it felt like my brain was like, I mean, it was like three hundred degrees oh. towards the top of my my head like, yeah. for hours on end. Damn. But, you know, it made for a good, you know, made for a good time. It yeah, good yeah, crew. yeah. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. Do you like, um, when it comes to actually cooking and preparing shit, do mm -hmm. you like fine dining or do you prefer like a home style, not home style, but I don't know, simpler, simpler shit? Well, I, I always, I always really like the, in like just the extreme focus of fine dining because like, yeah. they just take their shit, they, it's, it's so like serious. Every, yeah, it's so serious. And yeah. I like that. For the longest time, I started I started up in Rhode Island because I went to culinary school. Yes. And shout out. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Johnson <laughs> Wales University. Uh, and I started at like a, a steaks and chops kind of place, a sports bar. Yeah. With like, you know, I mean, it wasn't like garbage, but it wasn't fine dining. Right. And I was always like, dude, I'm taking it to the next level. And I had my friend who was in fine dining was like, Jared, I see you as more like kind of that low country, like kind of that more relaxed, casual food. And mm -hmm. I was I was offended by him. I was like, you don't think I could hang? Yeah. And I could, but I hated it. <laughs> like yeah. fine dining. Fine dining was always like a, it was like a scrimmage. It was like everybody was against 
each other. Yeah. To make to make, to look good in front of chef. Makes you know? sense. Yeah. Which yeah, I yeah. get. I get it. You know, you want a a mentor, you want to climb the ranks and all that stuff. But you want to look good for the boss. You want to look good for the boss. Yeah. Uh and hopefully become sous chef and like his right hand man. Where me, I'm just like, it's food. What are we doing here? You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So I kind of clashed with that. Yeah, yeah, right. That's like the classic. Someone goes out to like a real nice place and they look at the plate and they're like, where is everything? I know, yeah. 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 I had a lot of friends at that um, at that first restaurant like rag on me about like getting into fine dining because they're like, they're used to like big portions and stuff like that. But in like a 14 course tasting menu, all those little p- plates add up. Add up, yeah. And yeah, yeah, you yeah. leave stuff. <laughs> right. But you pay the price. Now, what's that guy's name? I'm thinking about him. He's like known for doing crazy shit with food. He's the American guy with the blonde hair. He does like the... Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, you idiot sandwich. Yeah, yeah. donkey. You know, someone the other day asked me what I am, like nationality-wise, and I really wanted to say an idiot sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this that dude, he does like, uh, it's like art almost. Alinea? Uh, Grant Atkins? Is he over in Chicago? He, yeah. like, like How do you they, say his name? Grant Atkins. Can we look him up? I think that is him. Grant Atkins. Yeah. He's like a creepy blonde guy. Yeah. He's like, yeah. Yeah, he he's very like, thin. He's yeah, very thin. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he... Uh, he yes, this dude. He's out of a linea, yeah. He, uh, he does molecular gastronomy. So he'll like take a balloon and fill it with flavor and you like... And you suck it out. Yeah. And yeah. then like the, his dessert is like this matte that like he drops all these sauces on yes yeah cracks open like freeze-dried chocolate and stuff that's crazy See if you can find like one of his one of his meal one of his dishes he's nuts dude yeah he's awesome yeah uh i read his auto i read his his biography um he actually the reason he, he looks a little strange he had tongue cancer Oh yes so yeah, he had, yeah, yeah, yeah he had yeah. like 80 percent of his tongue removed or something like that yeah which was like a huge thing in the cooking world because everybody was like, that's you can't what taste. you get. Well, that's what you get for using all those chemicals oh, on all like to make your wacky food. Oh shit. Which necessarily wasn't the case. Right. But it made for a good argument to stay away from all that wacky stuff. Yeah. Um see that looks like a bird. Yeah. He um That food looks like a bird. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah, he's wacky. Uh, he's into yeah. like He's like artistic with his food. Yeah. It's nuts. There was one thing he did where um, they came out with an inflated pillow and they like you, they pricked it and put the plate on top. So as you ate, the, the, uh, the pillow deflated and let out a scent of like rosemary. Oh. So it's not even on the plate, but you taste it and you smell it. You, yeah, it's like a, yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. a lot of senses, you know, wacky senses stuff. Right. Yeah. It's like a whole experience. You're yeah. not just going to eat a yeah. meal. He's a, he's a cool dude. He's very intense. Yeah, um, I'm sure. But he spawned like an amazing amount of, of chefs. And he's from, he originally worked at uh, the French Laundry for uh, Thomas Keller. Who, okay. Like, set the level of American fine dining from like the 90s on. I like how you brought him up to totally shit on him. And he, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he, he, dude, he, he looks like he's cool as shit. He's like a mad scientist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I think he's cool. I, I shit on him by how he looks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I keep, every time I see him, I'm like, you, he looks like a Bond villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like a Bond villain. But, um, like a I heard working for him is a little intense. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Someone like that? Yeah, because it's a three That's mission like star working wrestling. for Kanye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In a sense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and just being like, this is great. Everything's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to do what? Yeah. We're going to yeah. make fucking salt uh, bubbles? Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of that wacky, wacky stuff. But I never really got into it. I For me, it's like, I don't know. I, I my favorite food to cook is something that like evokes memories of like, oh, this is how my grandma would cook, like that kind yeah. of like make make somebody feel comfortable, not like they're in a museum of food, you know, like oh, don't oh. touch anything. Right, right, right. This is so delicate. Yeah, it's like an art, yeah. art piece. Exactly. Yeah, and you can, there's a cool medium. You can find a middle ground of it and make it interesting but accessible. Right, right, right. Who's that other guy? I see him a lot on Instagram. I th- what's his name? Chris Petroni, something like that. Hmm. That might be uh, that might be his name. He makes like the videos uh, of him cooking, but it's like above. 
Oh, like okay. everybody does. Yeah, yeah. But he, um, he's when you said you like food that is uh, it evokes emotion. Yeah, this guy is like the one. Yeah, yeah. All he's right, he's you. really good at it. I don't know if I can. I don't know if that's his name. I don't want to go deep into my phone looking for him. But Christian Petroni. Christian Petroni. That might be him. Yeah, the truth about him. What is this? A, a, a oh, just like, slam piece? Yeah, yeah, slam piece. This is uh, Aziz Ansari. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What was the uh, Hassan Minaj, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> he's, put, he's putting anthrax in his food. I tried to do a bit about that because uh, after a mic that I did like a couple of jokes about being a chef, Yeah, a couple of uh, fellow comics came up to me and they're like, dude, are you really a chef? be weird if I was making that up. I was <laughs> yeah, like, why, are you trying to Hassan Minaj me right now, dude? Yeah. Like, why would I make that up? <laughs> sure. Yeah, we make up a lot of shit. Yeah, but yeah, but like... It's mostly about getting pussy or exactly. something. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Or like a gay cousin that you don't really have. Yeah, yeah. Um, but another thing I wanted to bring, because you brought up uh, Kitchen Confidential, yeah. which I haven't ha- I haven't read yet. I have. I actually have it somewhere over there. But, yeah, I see um, it right there. He, B- Bourdain is like... He's like the Keith Richards of chefs. Yeah. I think he's like the coolest. Definitely the coolest. Guy. Yeah. His yeah. vernacular, the way he ex- describes things are, is very like, keeps you on like the edge of your seat. Yeah. And he's just got a swagger to him. Yeah. He's like a rock star yeah. chef. Yeah. Cause One of the first ones. He, um, I've read Kitchen Confidential probably three or four times yeah. over. I've bought it. Two times in English, once in Spanish for a, f- a fellow cook. Um, and I have it signed by Anthony Bourdain. It oh, says for Jared. Oh, shit. Yeah. I got to meet him up in Rhode Island back in 2014. He was uh, he was doing like a good versus evil tour. So it was him and Eric Repair from La Bernadine, which is a three Michelin star a restaurant, a seafood restaurant in New York City. Okay. Check out their food. They're, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a little bit more classic French. Uh, and so it was like, you know, you got the serious classic French se- chef and then Bourdain and their best friends. And they just like riff off of each other. It was very cool. Yeah. And for like, uh, I was graduating culinary school and moving back to Jersey. And uh, so as like a kind of a present for that, my dad got me like VIP tickets to that show. Um, and I got a little meet and greet. In very the back. cool. So I got like a, an apron. With Bourdain, he signed it and then put a um a chef bloody chef knife on it. Oh, nice! Which is like one of his uh one of his like signature signatures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but he was a very cool, dude. Very down to earth. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, he seems it. I mean, for someone to have anybody to have traveled as much as he has. Yeah. Just I mean, just happened to be filmed, but yeah, you would learn so much about so many different people you'd probably have a completely different view on life yeah in general yeah he's seen yeah. like villages that nobody's ever been to yeah like you know southeast asia and all over the world yeah um his his two other books media what is it medium raw and i forget the other one no no i forget what it was but uh his basically there's like a trilogy of books starting with kitchen confidential yeah they're all pretty pretty amazing but he he does like a in-depth description of eating uh walrus tusk uh, or no like um it was like uh, up in alaska they would eat like uh like the 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 f- nose of like uh not a walrus but like one of those like like a sea lion sea lion, sea lion but, like yeah. he would talk about how like they would eat the end of like the uh like the little hairs on its it was wild you're like oh. Oh, but like the inuit like, like yeah it was just like really crazy and just very imaginative you know yeah you're like wow dude you're in like an igloo eating sea lion and shit for sure yeah yeah or you see people uh hang with some remote tribe and they're drinking some animal's blood yeah yeah snake poison and shit like yeah. that yeah wacky stuff. they're so used to it yeah he um he describes like I mean the the dude basically from like eighteen years old until uh, Kitchen Confidential got him to be like a famous author. Yeah, um, that's what's was cool. like in New York City dining. Like he was yeah, running around a heroin addict, getting fucking heroin from Alphabet City and Whoa. buying records, and then he was like, he he kind of the way he talked about food was like how a, a like a lead singer of a band 
talks about going to CBGBs and like yeah. like he was just like the gritty underworld of like chefs and where they hang out after and stuff like that. It was very cool. Yeah. And, rom- and romanticized it. Definitely. But when you, I mean, when you see it on the other end and like, you know, your, your fellow line cook is like coming off a bender mm. and you're like, this you is know. pretty ugly. Yeah, yeah. It's not as it's not as romantic as that's what it is with everything, though. I mean, I think everybody likes the uh, you know twenty seven year old that died, the twenty seven year old rock star that yes, died, and, exactly, or the author that drank himself to death. Like, better better to burn out than fade away, kind of thing. Yeah, I think everyone likes that. Um, yeah, it seems it's romantic. It's like it you is. said, it's romantic. It you, you don't want to see Jimi Hendrix like. Fucking going bald and, uh, you yeah. know, getting into like synth wave 80s music. Or doing know? like commercials. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think Doug Stanhope had a bit about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where he's yeah. like, I think he was uh, saying when people say, oh, he went too soon. Like he went before his time. Yeah. He's like, how do you know? Maybe he ran out of shit. Exactly. Maybe he would have sold out after yeah, that. Yeah, he would have yeah, fucking, yeah. yeah. Some people live in immortality that way. Biggie. Yep. They just die before they can. Yeah, they're like sell cemented out. into time. As like yeah, badass and yeah, raw and at the moment game changing kind of person. Yeah, but and that person rarely gets the their flowers anyway. There was yeah. a, um a chef. I think uh, he, Bourdain talks about it in Kitchen Confidential. His name's Marco Pierre White. Oh yeah, you yeah. yeah yeah yeah. He was uh, Gordon Ramsay's mentor. Yes, and they called him like. He's like a fucking the animal. Infant terrible, like this, like he. They called him like a the bad baby, like because he mm. would just he. There's a story he, um, in his restaurant, they served the cheese course at the wrong time, mm. which is like they had like a cart with a bunch of different cheeses, like it's like an inter, you know, palate cleanser, and so he he's freaking out. He tells the guy to come back in. He grabs a block of cheese, throws it up against the wall in the kitchen. It's you know, it's like ninety degrees in the kitchen. The uh, cheese hits the wall and sticks. And like slowly starts like glooping down the wall and everybody runs over to it and he's like, don't touch it. Don't touch it. And he like makes it just like and continue service while this cheese is just slowly uh, coming off the wall. He's wacky. He's, yeah. Yeah. He like, uh, make a, you clean it later. Yeah. <laughs> the, a, line, a, a line chef like uh, complained about how it was too hot in the kitchen. Yeah. And he like cut the he like sliced the back of his kitchen jacket yeah to give him like you know some yeah wacky yeah can never get away with that shit now yeah but he ended up giving away like he gave back his michelin stars which is like whoa you're not you're like it was very controversial because he was like i don't want to be a part of this i want to like mm. start a family wow basically like yeah it's basically like giving back your your oscars it's like marlon brando exactly yeah, yeah that's having, the first thing yeah, I thought exact, of. exactly the, the the uh native american, native american. Uh, yeah um, Speaking of that, did you ever see the the time Norm did that? No, Norm McDonald? No. Dude, see if you can find that. Let me see that. There's a video of Norm McDonald accepting an award, but as a joke, he brings up a Native American guy. What? And <laughs> it's like the, everybody, people are laughing, but all he's doing is saying the truth. Yeah. He's like, this place smells like blood. <laughs> <laughs> That's the amazing. guy's being so serious. Here's Littlefoot. Norm's not <laughs> laughing at all. Like, oh, that's amazing. It's so fucking funny. That's amazing. He was fucking one of the best. Oh, my God. So dude. goddamn funny. I, I, it's weird because like, um, I say um sometimes and I, I get my, you know, I, I, I always listen. I try to listen to all my sets and learn from them. And I'm like, oh, I say um a lot or... And then I listen to Norm and like he just has this like stream of consciousness like but not like how your neighbor would talk. Mm. So he says like uh, you know and he says like you know a lot and like um when he does that like you you know oh, this I think this is it. Is this it? But you are right. It. He does do that. <laughs> Something very important to say. <laughs> oh God! With the full garb. That's Look at amazing. that headdress. My name is Johnny Two Feathers. <laughs> While you're here tonight's show, I want you to think about something. The spot where you're sitting, every square foot of ground in this country was stolen from my ancestors. <laughs> oh God! Stole it, 
<laughs> Look at how stone faced he is. Holy so, shit. You forgive us if we do not laugh alone. There is nothing funny about the extermination <laughs> of the people. Oh my god. Is that John Oliver? I think it was John Oliver. The theater stinks of blood. That's all I have to say. I hope. Johnny Q. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it gives him an outro like a host. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. Oh my god, so got so good, dude. He was he could he was he did exactly what you were saying. Yeah, where he could make up for his stammering or for his ums and yes, uhs. Exactly with his delivery and his like yeah cadence. Yeah, he, he kept it as like a, a rhythmic thing. Yeah, it didn't seem like he was losing train of thought. It was almost like he was keeping you. Kind of paced at wherever he wanted you in the yeah. in the story. Yeah. So I always like go like you know, it's a little norm. You know, I don't beat myself up too much about it because yeah, not everybody is like you know Lenny Bruce would just be like touch 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 and you're like whoa I don't think like that but yeah. I, you know you see it's it's a little bit more um accessible the norm style you know yeah yeah well I think I think. And there's obviously anomalies, but I think the highest level of comedian is one that sounds like they're just talking. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, like that um, around the office water, like uh, water fountain kind of thing. You know, it's just like yeah, that's the. And I notice that the more I'm dissecting my own comedy, is that when I'm set up punch, I'm just like rigid. The crowd, the audience, or whatever. Um, is not as warm because they just they're like it's like i'm doing a monologue you know right. whereas like I th- what i think they want is like this ex- not necessarily crowd work so it's not like a you know a yes and and off them it's like i'm a nor you know this is just me spitballing kind of thing yeah 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 they can see it it's not just the words yeah they see everything yeah yeah and i mean of course like f- fans of comedy appreciate a good structure and set up punch and like notice all those little intricacies but most most of the people in a crowd are just like they're they're along for the ride yeah and if you're too structured you seem like a try not like trying too hard but like it's too it's too comedy it's like yeah you need to break that wall down right so it's like right you know it's easily digested well i think what what we all see unless you go to the live shows but what all of us see is an hour we watch an hour yes and it's like a fantastic hour it's mostly all material yeah they're not ranting they're not going off on shit yeah a lot of the time so i think we have this idea that we need to be that yes but that's a very specific set that that person's doing they're filming it they yeah you know there's something ran it down into the into a diamond. Yes. Yeah. 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 Did you see uh big J Okerson's dog belly? Yes. I like that a lot Fucking hilarious. because it just was like, he was in the room at the moment. Yeah. Present. Yeah. So like that guy who broke the chair, you know, spoiler alert, but like those moments where he's like in, cause he's doing crowd work, but it's to get to his next joke. So the yes. way he like implements a lot of those different var- like varieties of comedy is, is big. He's so goddamn funny. He's so funny, dude. He um he reminds me of somebody like in high school that I would have just like sat around and just been like I this is fun. He looks he like just, an older version of that person anyway. He, yeah, exactly. With like dyed beard yeah, hair and dude, yeah, it's a hot topic. He like <laughs> yeah. very yeah, chain wallet. Yeah, I've I've um I've smoked weed with him. Oh, that's dope. At Legion of Skanks. Oh, hell yeah. Have you been to Legion of Skanks I shows? I haven't. I haven't. They're but, fun. Yeah. Yeah, they they're great. very fun. I got a friend who uh He's an intern for them. Oh, that's dope. So, uh, what, he like Gas up. Digital or just Legion of Skanks? Pretty much just Legion of Skanks. Um, yeah, he's the dab turn. They bring in, uh, that's so dope. Yeah, he just brings <laughs> in dabs for them and shit. Oh, well, for Louis J. Gomez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's so fun. He said that, um, he has a, a crowd work special that's going to be dropping. It's literally all crowd work, which is the complete opposite. That's, yeah. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Have you ever listened to The Day the Laughter Died? Yes. How about Unfortunately, that? only on YouTube. Like, it was only on YouTube because for some reason there's like a copyright deal. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I could not, you can't find it on uh, Spotify. That's right. That makes but sense. I love that. What a crazy idea. It's, it's like, to, 
Wasn't he? He was in the process of doing Madison Square Garden and then went to Danger Fields to do th- a set, right? I like, think it's the opposite. Oh. I think he finished Madison Square Garden. Okay. And was like the biggest comic in the country. And yeah. was like, let's go to Danger Fields. And was the what was and it, have no the material. day before it was a Christmas Eve or something like that. I think it was something like that. And yeah. See, I yeah. First of all, the coolest thing about Dice is like the, it was a different gener he was a char- it was like a caricature. Yeah. Of like a New Yorker, a greaser type. Yes. Uh, Elvis. Elvis. Yeah. Like just this, like on the street corner rapping, like you still see, like I still see glim- glimpses of that in New York when you have somebody just comes up, like on the side of the street, just starts chatting away with you, and you're yeah. like, "Wow, you're saying some funny shit," and you don't even know it. Um, but just the the gall that he had to like r- record it, release it, stay in the pocket, yeah, no holds barred. These guys are walking. I'm gonna riff on that, yeah slowly just you can it i like specials where you can like almost sonically f- figure out what the room looks like at the moment mm. you know you're like yeah. oh like especially like uh i i talk about this with um pat oswald's record like uh, spe- uh albums mm-hmm. his first one you can hear it be like two to three hundred people in like a club like a club or like a like kind of like that a lounge and then two more after that, you're like, oh, it's a theater. Mm-hmm. And you hear that boom of like different levels of, of seating. Right. But in the day the laughter died, it's just like you can hear drinks clank in and like you're like, oh, like there's two tops, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. Pretty, it's People pretty getting wild. up. You're a jerk. Yeah. Like, like yeah. ladies being, yeah, fuck you. Yeah, you something whore. about milk or something yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, so, yeah. it's so good. <laughs> That's such a wild idea. Yeah. To do that. Yeah. Especially, I mean, at his level now, his comedians sell out arenas all the time. Yeah, it's yeah. wild. Yeah, if we're being honest, it's really wild. Yeah, to think that a god, an art where one guy is just up there telling jokes. Yeah, that I, you can sell out a fucking arena. I remember when Dane Cook did Vicious Circle. Yeah, that was a big one. That was a huge. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like this dude's in the round at MSG. Yeah. Like huge. Louis like CK. 30, 40,000 people or something like that. Yeah. It's like that's what ACDC would be playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, you're yeah. like, it's one guy telling jokes. Yeah. That's crazy. It's the complete opposite. But I mean, I, do you listen to a lot of Rogan? Because yeah. Rogan's always talking about like where he puts different moments of comedy, like where he puts doing an arena to a theater to a club. And I like that he he's constantly like, 30 to 50 people. Mm. If you have a room full of 30 to 50 people, you can, if you're not making like 80% of them laugh, you can tell. Yeah. But like with like a, an arena, it's like you almost, it's just like a blanket of laughter. It's yeah. like weird to like pinpoint exactly what's funny or not. Yeah. You can't have as much fat in your material. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's pretty wild. The yeah. Inti- the just intimacy like, of it all. Totally. That's just like even, even at, you know, a, a a lower level. It's the difference between doing a bar show with thirteen people and yes. then doing a comedy club with a hundred people. Exactly. Yeah. You're gonna do better. Yeah. Arguably, in a comedy club because yes. there's more people that you know yeah, have the probability that. of getting a laughter. Yes. And the, that those like the the deafening of silence in a bar show is way more noticeable. Oh yeah. Than a club. Yeah. Especially if you can hear the TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you can hear the attention span, uh, like that's that's always really rough. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, do you like producing shows? I because you, you, you haven't in a little while. I now, haven't right? in a little while. Unfortunately, yeah. I don't know if you heard, but that restaurant closed. I think I saw you post about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is unfortunate. Uh-huh. Um, I did like it because I think with like God, I'm like. Uh, you know, we're talking about geeking out on food and stuff like that. But since I started comedy, like I've really, I went from like listening to Black Sabbath on Spotify and like bands to like all I do is listen to the comedy podcast or mm. or comedy albums. Yeah, and the way they talk about like the industry of like, I mean, eventually you want to get past at clubs and start doing like the funny bones or the improvs and stuff. It's it's such a business that we don't realize and just like 
writing jokes. Yeah. That you're like, oh, the idea of like uh, putting on a good lineup and where does everybody fit and how do I make a show uh, work and how do I promote and I think all that really strengthens a comic because you realize that like it's so multifaceted mm. of like creating a, um, a product essentially that you yeah. that you hope to like I mean it sounds like like really shitty to say because comedy is like so much more than that but the a- the asses in seats mentality yeah it's which true is just like how yeah. the world turns yeah um, same thing with cooking like you could make the best food but if nobody's coming in your restaurant shit's going under yeah so yeah i really like producing it plus it gave me like a chance to meet comics and and like just uh just be co- like fully enveloped in it yeah um but the headache of like the promoting is always was always a kind of a yeah i feel like that's that's the hardest that's gotta I'm be not the hardest that part guy. i'm not that guy yeah, yeah i'm yeah, yeah. like more like yeah i'll go up and hopefully you'll think i'm funny and like you'll remember me yes where this is like hey everybody like you're just like beat you're beating down the door yeah of everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. just be like come here come here come here yeah um but when it works i if any if i did it again i'd want it at a bar because i felt like the shotgun style with the bar in the back it just didn't make for a great room yeah uh when it was good it was great but um I think it would just, I'd rather like a bar, a little bit more relaxed where people can just go in and get two drinks and watch a show and not feel like they have to buy a meal, you know? Right, right, that right, right. Th- I felt like that was a detractor. Sure. Yeah, yeah, they feel bad for not yeah. buying, spending more. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I mean, especially here in New York, uh, this everybody runs shows, everybody is like switching off shows. That's how people give each other stuff stage time yeah like absolutely if you don't have some like i personally don't want to run a show yeah um but i do this so oh yeah it's like kind of a trade-off exactly it's a barter yeah. it's a barter system yeah because really it's like you know i'll scratch your back if you scratch mine yeah um i've come across a couple of scenes or groups of comics that are a little less reciprocating mm. which is like i get it like i'm not not here to like make enemies or anything like that. It's, at the end of the day, it's dick and fart jokes to me. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah totally. You know, <laughs> people take it too serious. Yeah, it's like why well, I never got in a theater group or anything like that. Um, yeah, right. But you know, I, I I've l- luckily I've come across some like really cool people along the way that like are just down to, like for comedy and comedy's sake. You know, mm-hmm. not so much like a what have you done for me lately like give me give me give me yeah i like the i like the give and take you know do you have a uh a a, a specific and weird heckle story one that comes to mind oh man um i only ask because i have one that, oh i want to hear you yeah, yeah this uh, is this is a good one I, I yeah i can't <laughs> i can't really think of one off the bat um Usually, like, I found that, like, I, I kind of just plow through heckles. Yes. Just, yeah, like, I do the same I, thing. Like, almost like, I'll, like, listen to it, and I was like, did I even hear what yeah, they yeah, said? Yeah, yeah, um, But I'd like to get better at it, because I think as you, as you do comedy more and more, it's like, there's a part, it's like a little trash, trash compactor of, like, angst and anger mm. of, like, shows that, like, went bad, or, like, where, like, you're waiting to unleash that that like little fucking demon yeah. at somebody who deserves it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just um, waiting for a reason. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I feel like there's some some of that, you know, and I just haven't had, had the time to just... I had the opportunity to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. tell me your story. Cause I don't hear it. All right, so this was, this happened Saturday, this past oh, Saturday. Oh, wow. Super recent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, it's, I, got, I have a story that spans my career. It was last week. This was Saturday. No, this was... um. But it was at an open mic, so it's even dumber. Yeah. It's even stupider. Yeah. Like, an open mic for people that have, you know, never done or seen some shit like that, it's the lowest stakes of anything. Yeah. Music open mic, poetry open mic. Yeah. It's the lowest stakes. Anybody it, can go. Yes. Um, To be an asshole at one of those, you're just, you suck. Like, you're the worst. <laughs> you're, you, yeah, that's like ripping your Domino's delivery guy over the pizza. It's yeah. like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, that's uh, a good analogy. Yeah, yeah it's true. like, it's base level. Uh, yeah, 
it, it, there's an agenda behind it if you're if yeah. you're if you're going out of your way to to just fucking be a, be a dick be a dick yeah, yeah yeah for sure so so this kid i had seen him one or two other times before and um he went up like three people before me or some shit and um he didn't do well fine happens yeah uh and he sat right in the front with his girlfriend okay Oh God! He brought his girlfriend to an open mic. Yeah, uh, I think she wanted to go up too, but okay. I don't know. I don't know if it ended up happening. All right, all right. Um, or maybe she went up before. I don't know. Either way, she. Uh, so they're there, and I. They've been talking and interrupting during everybody. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But I think he was really upset that he did really, really bad. Um, so he just wrote off the whole. Yeah, road yeah, yeah, at yeah. That point. So he would like. She, the girl was interrupting almost innocently. Okay. If that makes sense. Like, she'd be like, you ask a question that you don't expect people to answer, and she'd be like, oh, well, I like that. Yeah. 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 And she'd which, be like, oh, I'm sorry. Which is like, not, you don't want it. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's not like going to completely derail you from your exactly. set. Exactly. So I told this joke um, about justin timberlake and i was like justin timberlake is the coolest white guy that pretends to be black that was <laughs> yeah. that was like the basis of the joke yeah. and i got some laughs off that and a little bit more after whatever i said yeah and he uh he looks at me and he's a white guy and he looks at me and he goes um wait 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 what what part of europe is he from there's a and i'm like what europe and he's like there's a di- there's different part there's eastern europe and western europe and north and south and I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, you're up there saying all white people are pieces of shit, oh, pretended geez. to be black. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, for, yeah. I don't think I said yeah, that. Yeah, that's how you d- I'm like, deciphered I, it. <laughs> I told him, I'm like, I'm white. Yeah, yeah. First of all. Yeah. Second of all, I remember, and in this moment, now he's standing up. He's, he's as far from me as I am to you. Yeah. He's standing up, and his girlfriend's like, no, 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 we have to go. But as he's standing up, I look at him. I'm like, I remember this dude. One of the times I saw him at an open mic, he had mm-hmm. a ball gag in his mouth. He went on stage with a ball gag in his mouth. And uh, and that was like the last thing I said to him. Like, Prop you comedy. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who yeah. knows what else he had in him? Yeah. Give him butt plug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, anal beads or some yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then he and his lady, they got up and left. Mm-hmm. And um, in the hallway, I heard him very upset being like, I came here to do stand up and it's silent. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, blame the room. Uh, yeah. Blame the room. Yeah. And, uh, but what we found out later on, his girlfriend was like, Oh, I'm so sorry. He's got uh schizophrenic tendencies. So that's not good. Yeah. It was, you can only be so mean to that guy. Yeah. Because he'll come back. Yes. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, you don't want to live in fear. Yeah. 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 <laughs> over uh, criticizing somebody else's douchebaggery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sure, know? sure. Yeah. I, I, I've always kind of kept that, you know, I was like, I, I was in high school when like Columbine happened or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're like, ooh, you know, be nice be nice to everybody yeah. because some people don't have a, a, a governor in their brain to yeah. like, what's right what, yeah what's right and wrong yeah not to like <laughs> unleash hell yeah uh, however they see fit um but that's that's really i don't know the that's pretty shitty to do at an open mic yeah well he it was weird because he they came back and he apologized oh that's that's which not is bad. nice I yeah suppose. yeah 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 it was decent but um it was weird i never had something like that happen yeah Someone that's stand up and fucking yeah i um yeah. i mean i've had like uh you know like yeah, you got that right. That kind of thing. Yeah. Where I'm just like, yep, okay, cool. Like, you or like, a- uh, what? What? Uh, all right. You know, like that kind of thing. But I've never, yeah, I haven't really addressed it that much. Right. right. Um, yeah, it's easiest to not. Yeah. 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 Because I'm. That's because uh, we were talking about it earlier, like that. Uh, on natural stream of consciousness in the mm. moment, con- that level of comedy when you've like, you got your act, you're. You know, you know how to hold the stage a little bit. You put both of them together, and now you're like a a killer. You know. Yeah. Um, my problem is like all my my rolodex will just spin if I don't like stay in the chunk, and I'm like, oh, I'm doing my self deprecating stuff, which like I know next is my dating chunk. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if I dress this, I don't know where the hell I am. It'll I get throw exa- me off my route, saying. you know? Yeah. So I try it like, which is like, you know, lo- you know, very infant stage comment, you know, I got to yeah, get better beginner, at that. Beginner yeah, problems. Beginner, yeah, yeah, yeah. beginner problems. For sure. Know? For Where sure. you see like a Joey Diaz who can just riff, Keep riff, going. and then just find his way back to the Go bit. right back to it. Yeah. Yeah. It does feel good when you're able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, anyway, what was I talking about? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's what, that's what you want in a comic is just that kind of like have you, off the cuff. Have you ever seen the video of the, of the guy? I guess he was a comedian. He was uh, dealing with a heckler and he smashed him over the head with a guitar. I have seen that. His name's Kenny something. Can, can we find that? This is a good one. Oh. <laughs> Look up uh, comedian smashes yeah. with a guitar. <laughs> there's actually a pretty decent compilation of uh, stage fight. Uh, there's the I Jim Jeffrey. Type bunch. it in all the way. It came right. Yeah. Out. yeah. Look at him. That guy. Yeah, dude. That's a honky tonk man. Right oh there. my god. Fuck yeah. This is crazy. Dude. He's got like road dog written all over him. Yeah. This has to be in like Indiana or something. Like he's some. He's probably town. on his like fourth night driving gig to gig yeah. yeah in some dust town he's killing he's killing right now yeah <laughs> Look at this guy. He's got the 12 string. That's an expensive guitar. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I'm watching it on the laptop. <laughs> Whoa. <sighs> Not the gay jokes. Oh, here it is. Nice. Here it is. Classic. That was good. That was a good burn. Yeah. Look at this. Oh. 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 That's a lot. That's a lot of force to pop out of the back of a guitar like that. Oh man, that's not a WWE guitar. Yeah. The guy fucking came at me. Yeah. What do you think, folks? Nobody agrees yeah, with him. Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts. Is like, let's all let's all get our story straight for the cops. <laughs> and everybody's like, Nah, dude, what? You yeah. went nuts. <laughs> he goes, show's over. Yeah. And then you just gotta walk through that crowd. The other thing is like. That guitar is part of his act. Yeah. He, and yeah. he's not going to get paid for that gig. So, no. like, he's got to scratch up some money for that. Uh, I wonder what happened to this guy after that. Um, <laughs> Fucking just I, I went, I looked him up. I, I think he, uh, I think he ended up apologizing yeah. and just fading out into the scenes. <sighs> but, that's uh, yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy that that's what that guy's famous for. Yeah. Just yeah. breaking a dude's head with it. Yeah. A- you don't, you don't want that to be, you want, <laughs> you want your first, like, letterman to be. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that shows up when you look up your name. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Um, God damn. What a yeah, fuck. That's, that's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, but um, it is fun when when, a, when you do see a comedian, like a high-level comedian, just take out, snuff that shit out. Yeah. And they just keep going, right? We good? Yeah. And just fucking yeah. keep going. Yeah, they... Oh, um, yeah. It, it's, it's, there are different, like, levels. Sometimes, like, you, you can just tell where they're at in like either the weekend or the show mm. or that month of their career with how they handle it. Yeah. Cause sometimes you're like, wow, you're letting out some shit that you've bottled up mm-hmm. and that this person's about to get it. Um, yeah. But for me, it's just like, I'm so, I like etiquette, you know, when it comes to like comedy shows, mm. especially like whenever I have like a bringer show or anything like that, I'm always like, like at least I did it. Early on, I was like, you know, don't talk unless talk to like to like my family. And I, yeah. You know, if they if they ask you a question, don't just not say anything because that's weird. Right. But like, yes or no or one word answers are great. Like, don't it's nothing bothers me more is when people try to like make things about them. They Let me steal the show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, have you not? Have you not researched any comedy at all? Yeah. Like, that's not appreciated. Yeah. That's the dangerous part of getting the crowd involved. Though. Yeah, it's, yes, it's so big now because everyone wants crowd work. Exactly. Clips, yeah, and Andrew Schultz is so fucking good. And, yep, yep. At crowd work, yeah. everyone wants to be like that. Yeah, and me, you know, me, me, yeah, choose me. Yeah. yeah, there's a ton of that now. And now the audience, people who go to comedy shows, are like, oh, maybe I'll be the one that they. 
yeah, put but on their page. You, know? you, you tack on booze yeah and uh, you know loose lips man people yeah. are just gonna just shout out bullshit yeah and it's 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 kind of interesting because you're seeing a lot of those clips you could tell that they weren't in the part of the crowd work like you hear like uh, like sam Merrill and mark norman they're starting to do that at the end of their show mm-hmm. to fill like an extra 15 10 minutes or whatever they'll start riffing on with the audience yeah but you do that enough People are going to start doing it in the middle of your show, and then you could see it in their face. They're yeah. like, this isn't the time for this, you know? Yeah, and they yeah, get angry. Yeah. yeah. Which, like, you know, you reap what you sow. Yeah, I mean, it is definitely a part of the game. Yeah. You want to be good at that. I, I want to be quick witted. F- yeah, yeah. It's a muscle. Yeah. You know, there it's are. just like ranting. There are fun bits where you could start, like, uh, how what was the longest relationship you were in? Mm-hmm. And people could say, like, you know, two years. Or they could be like, oh, my one girl. And you're just like, all of a sudden, they're talking a lot yeah and yeah, yeah. you're like damn i have 10 minutes and now you have eight minutes you know for sure so yeah it's something to always have in your back pocket i think yeah and it's and it's really only something you can practice when you get to the point of having a consistent crowd yes you know yeah i i always like think like on because as like a as like a miker and like you know a, like a beginner conf now five years celebrating five years today hell yeah um congrats thanks man it's been uh it's been wild it did yeah. kind of suck that i started in 2019 and then a year <laughs> in everybody stopped doing things for a year yeah right um but you, uh, like at least me like you, you think at like five minute intervals you know like a mic is five minutes usually like a spot at like broadway or something is between like five to eight minutes yeah. and you start but like we're in this for the the hour special right mm-hmm. like we're hoping to get our, our tight five to our 10 to our 20 to our half hour and then our hour. Yeah. And there's going to be t- like, you know, l- down the road, there's going to be times where you're going to like need a little bit of that fat, need a little bit of that fluff mm-hmm. to fill like a, you know, a, a headliner 45 minute slot at a club. Hell yeah. And that's where those muscles start flexing, you know. That's what, that's what you hear all the time. Yeah. Once you go on the road and you start doing writing on stage. Yeah half baked bits that you're like let me see how this unfolds yeah and that's just where like the stronger comics kind of grow yeah that's so exciting yeah i forgot who i was talking to but i was i'll say the same thing to you imagine being able to be funny for a full hour in front of people it it fucking wrecks my nerves and my brain a full hour like and you these Especially now, like since Louis started doing those hours every year, mm. and Fred, like new slate, new slate. Because I, I mean, as nice as it does sound, like back in the day, you're like you could have a career off ten minutes of comedy, travel the country, you yeah. know, work clubs. It's way more interesting that like there's a um, there's like a goal, like every like you know, we we live in a time where information is shared lightning fast. So like either you touch on a subject and it's over like that. It's hack. Yes. You know? Oh, it, I thought about this. It's like as a comic, if you talk about something too early, it's like too soon. Mm-hmm. But if you talk about something later, it's hack. Yeah. So if you're like, like, oh, if right now, hey, uh, remember coronavirus? People are like, you yeah, know, no that's here. lame. Yeah. But you're like, it's something everybody went through for like. A year and a half sure it's a major moment yeah, yeah but if yeah, you yeah. talked about like it at the moment you're like we're, we're dealing with this right now we don't want yes, to talk about it. people it's are so, it's such a like a double-edged sword mm-hmm. so having to like constantly write new material that's fresh not hack not outdated um and an angle that nobody's hit yet yeah you have to like you're, that's you're the fun part it's so much fun yeah it's so yeah. much fun because there's like it's you like know. a puzzle. It's exactly. terrifying. Exactly. It's a scary it's so, fucking puzzle. Yes. Yeah. Has that angle, like, am I, is this a fresh eyes on, on a subject? Yes. And building that, like, you, you know, building your, your act and your material, an hour is fucking so much, dude. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. Yeah. And then it's like, <clears throat> it's just like seeing, like, a champion defend their belt. When yeah. When you see yeah. someone other world hours and yeah. hours and hours, yeah. you're like, George Carlin has, what, 12 hours? Yes. Like, yeah. Obviously, he lived a long time. But, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Louis, he's got 
what probably close to 10 maybe something like know. that Eight, yeah something yeah. like that yeah. it's it's not uh, Regan, um, DePaulo, like all these guys that like have like thirty years under their belt, they have at least five, six hours maybe yeah. of material out there. Yeah, and th- I mean the the coolest thing about comedy is like there's no you know it's not like a you know boxing or something like that where it's like it's obvious it's not good for your health to continue. Mm-hmm. This is like. It's like a bug. You see it. Like, I mean, you see late night, like Seth Meyers going out and doing comedy tours or, or Hassan Minaj, like leaving uh, the daily show to, to go back into comedy. Yeah. It's like a bug that like you can't shake. I don't think. Yeah. And, and conversely, you have guys like Dave Attell, yeah. who's obviously a comedian's comedian, been a comedian for a long time, but he, he does the last spot at the cellar. Yes. He I've closes yeah. the cellar. Yeah. It's like he could do any spot that he wants, but he Easily. chooses to go dead last. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's he, he's a little bit of the underworld. He likes the dregs. Yeah. He wants that rawness. Mm. And another thing about him, because you think for David Tell, it, Skanks for the Memories is, is- So good. Your mouth's fr- not pregnant. Front to back. Or your mouth can't get pregnant. That's um, a good one. Uh, what is he- uh, Get me an onion, a shoelace, and some Mr. Coffee, and I'll make you some hobo chili. Yeah, yeah. like he's just—he's absurd. He's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, but I think he has a fear of 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 finalization, comp, because he he's constantly writing new bits. You hear about all these comics saying, "I got a text from David Tell at two two in the morning, being like, do you have a bit about this? Yeah. Do you have a bit? I think he fears putting it on wax mm-hmm. because it like." I'm not to say he can't ever do it again because he's got more than enough material. I think he fears that, like, putting it into a box and tying it into a bow hmm. where he wants to just have that freedom of just going up there at midnight at the cellar. Right. And he, it's his playground. Yeah. You know, he can do whatever. Yeah. 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 Hell and yeah. I think that's what keeps him from churning out album after album. Mm hmm. Yeah. He's, he's, the, he's the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. Where you get an album from him every eight years. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Which I think is like, you know, I think that's cool. It is dope because in other mediums like music, they're kind of expected. They're almost on like a time. There's a fade away. Yeah. There's like, it's a freshman, sophomore. Like they always think like, uh, you know, strike while the iron's hot. You're trending now. Yeah. Where, I mean, that's, that's one of the cool things about like uh, an Instagram or whatever is you start seeing these like, you know, nineties, eight late eighties, uh, seventies, like all these comics that like, like, uh, like Freddie Prince and like, uh, like all these like seventies, eighties comics that like, I wasn't around for that. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have caught that on late night, Yeah, but it's like popping up as like the old, you know, and it gives like a, a chance for like those comics to keep working. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. I, I see a lot of, uh, there's a lot of comics like uh, on the like in like that kind of did the writer, you know, whatever they did away from stand up over in, in L.A. Yeah. They're still they're like creeping back into the clubs. Yes. Which is cool because, yeah. you know, I always go like. I mean, Bourdain said it. He was like, I am so lucky Kitchen Confidential was a hit because my knees are shattered. Yes. I can't reach into a low boy refrigerator anymore. Mm hmm it's tough to work a kitchen service after like 45, yeah. 50. Oh yeah. Cause it's, it's fucking brutal. It's war. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so he found, uh, an extension in, in, in writing, mm-hmm. um, and travel shows and stuff like that. But, uh, you always hear like, I, I, I love the aspect of like Dangerfield didn't get popular until his, you know, late or his fifties. Yeah. Well, he quit. He quit. Yeah. And then he so, came back. So just to show that, like, I mean, just to prove that the, the, there's a bug, you know, like yeah. he could have sold sighting and, the, you know, roofing or whatever and had a family and faded into the obscurity. But yeah, there was something gnawing in the back of his head. Like, yes, I've got these thoughts that I got to share with people and, and see if they react. Well, I've heard that a couple of times from from other comedians where they they say they started. And then for whatever reason they stopped. Yeah. And the the second time when they go back to it, they they're done. They yeah. S- they stick to it. Yeah. 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 Because I feel like it's like um, 
it's like a little i'm sure there's a withdrawal there's a uh you know it's that nagging like you're talking exactly about. Yeah. when you think when you constantly think in angles and bits it gets tough to to get that reaction in your everyday life yeah like even in in cooking it in the back of a house situation you could say some pretty off color shit and nobody yeah. like thinks twice because it's just hectic and hot and stressful so like it's not an office where like they're like you know we we have guidelines now granted you know obviously Thank God. so it's obviously sexual harassment and all that shit <laughs> yeah. is uh, uh, rearing its head with Batali and all that but um mm-hmm. there's definitely a lot of that in a lot trials. a lot of that <laughs> a lot of shit bags yeah. um yeah. but like you know riffing you know but when you're thinking in a comedic level, you're not going to get that that reward the same way as like doing it in front of a crowd with a microphone and and in that comedy set stage, you know. Yeah. So I think that's the problem is like people go back to their everyday life and they can't share that. Like yes. they can't get that. Yeah. What do you think about this? Yeah, it's just like an adrenaline junkie. Exactly. Like wanting, yeah. You yeah. know, not not having their fix for a while. Yeah. Like I got to jump off. Yeah. A plane. The laughs are like you crave them yeah and even like you know making the grocery store che- uh, checkout girl like crack up you're like hell yeah you're like fuck i want like 50 of those in a room yes validation yeah validate my brain yeah yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Make, totally yeah am i crazy or am i funny yeah um usually a little of both yeah that's usually what the answer is <laughs> but but you see like it tells and uh it, it's the same thing as like um like BB King sitting down and like playing blues until mm. he's like fucking eight or you know, until he was like eighty five or whatever. Oh, the best. It's like he didn't have to do backflips on stage and like slash it up and no, you know, uh, shred it up. He just he he rolled with the punches and it yeah. It's all of a sudden there's no expiration date on like your performance. Yeah, yeah. I forgot where the quote is, but there was like this. I think he was a cellist, or uh, or like a flamenco guitar player something okay, along those okay. lines uh and he and he was super old toward the end of his life and an interviewer asked him like why do you still play and he's like oh, i'm seeing improvements yeah that's wild yeah, yeah. like to be that at, yeah at that level of yeah. fucking virtuosity yeah and still want to fucking it's, keep going yeah it's, it's still seeing things that you can improve on it's pretty wild yeah yeah that's the definition of being a lifelong I guess artist, a lifelong yeah, yeah. purveyor of what it what it is you're doing. And I think the cool thing about comedy is there's always something happening to comment on. Be it like not yeah. even national, like uh, you know, things that are happening uh, in the public, but also like trends and yeah, culturally, yeah, culturally, yeah. There's always like something to riff on. Speaking of that, I mean, Shane Gillis is kind of inadvertently becoming like a cultural. Not, I don't want to say icon, but like a cultural uh, pivot point, I think. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah, I think like with, with, with Shane, uh, he hit a huge roadblock, yeah. which could have crumpled him easily. Yeah. It would have done that to anybody. Um, and he went about it the right way. He gave, he gave it a breath, um, but, you know, didn't really over apologize mm-hmm. he was like i fucked up somebody unearthed this like clip of something that happened years ago and paid his dues and the thing is like if you had really fucked up nobody would have went back uh, to bat for him yeah. stan hope wouldn't have been like hey come to my place and like chill in the compound right rogan wouldn't have like been such a supporter of it right because he you know he he fucked up with uh stereotyping and uh, you know yeah the asian stuff he, he didn't put anything in anybody's drink yeah yeah, yeah you yeah. know he didn't it was words he just said it words. was it was words words and, and uh and he, faces maybe yeah 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 <laughs> accents yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but you know are you <sighs> he kind of reintroduced the the idea of of fucking around yeah but like, like kind of everybody's like ah. Oh. But like, look at um, uh, mm-hmm. Steve Buscemi in uh, in in Reservoir Dogs. Mm. He says the N word like five times in a row in one scene. Yeah, 
he's act. The cameras are rolling. He's reading a script, but it, people could still be like, "Let's fucking blacklist him." No yeah. pun intended. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, he's a piece of shit. They do it to but, Tarantino all the time. Exactly. Yeah. And Spike Lee hates him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, like, what's important is um, it didn't. He didn't let it def- like. He didn't let it ruin him. Mm. And I think it gave him the freedom to like really take off. But it's one of those things where, and you see it happen in a bunch of different like mediums. Something like that happens and it makes them bigger. Yes. Like, yeah. I read a, I read a biography on Abe Lincoln and when he lost uh, the Senate race, mm-hmm. it, I mean, he became president after that. Because it was such a he he got so popular yeah. amongst people. Yeah. Even though we lost that, they're like, let's make him president. Exactly. You know? Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. that same same situation. Yeah, I think um like I, I have Asian friends that have commented on like just being like, What uh, you know seeing uh, him as like in the in a bad uh, like eye, you know? Yeah. And I can't discredit that. I'm like, I get it. Absolutely. Like, I'm not just gonna be like, well, fuck you. I'm a comic and we're allowed to do whatever the fuck we like. Yeah, you're allowed to, like, you're, you can feel hurt. Mm-hmm. I get it. Totally. Um, but also, like, the, first, like, the, there's, there's always redemption. There's always room for redemption. And it's not like he's, uh, like a law writer or a politician. He's a comic. It, yeah. It, the thing about, and, and I'm like, you know, and every, by the way, politicians do a fucking lot worse. And nothing happens to them at all. It's so. it, it's crazy <laughs> yeah. that like you, we're we're talking about people t- uh, telling jokes in nightclubs. Yeah, um, real racists go about racism completely different. Yeah, 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 uh, totally. And they're not joking. They're not joking. Yeah, they're talking about like uh, purity and weird <sighs> shit. Like it's not, it's not like he it, that. You, if you if you listen to a real racist, it's way creepier, darker. Oh, totally. Stra- and <laughs> yeah, or even like the, the the somebody trying to make a joke that's racist. Mm-hmm. I've seen it at open mics, and yeah. it, it just like nobody laughs because it's not funny. Right? There's no angle there. Yes. You're just saying something stupid and ignorant. Yes. Um. So uh, yeah, yeah. Like you're allowed to feel hurt, hurt but like it. He's he's a joke writer. He's yeah. a he's a stand up comic. Uh, he didn't hurt anybody. Like, yeah, he didn't uh, fuck with anybody's uh, ability to stay employed or you know their health or their well being. Yeah, he said some off color shit on a podcast that at the time nobody was listening to anyway. Yeah, yeah. and if you uh, I listened to it and he goes into an accent. It's like. You know, doesn't he say the c word? He says the c word. Yeah. He talks about Chinatown. Yeah. He does it in an old Brooklyn accent, like an old, you know, like a kind of a the nineteen thirties, nineteen forties Brooklyn accent. Yeah. He's just. It's just like uh, you want to talk about like locker room talk, like the you know grab him by the pussy. Yeah. It's that's a, it's uh, that. that was like uh, you know auto garage talk. You know, right, like right. or you know people talking. At a fucking car wash or something. Yeah. Saying some stupid shit. Sure. Um, Which doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't I can't reflect really, how they feel. Exactly. I can't know? really comment, like, as a fucking white dude. Yeah. But my dad's Jewish, and I've heard people, like, fucking say some nasty shit about, like, hurt, like, trying to t- be mean about Jewish people. Totally. And you can tell when people are, like, trying to be funny and trying to take a fucking slice at them. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't, I don't think... Shane Gillis was like really trying to hurt anybody. Yeah, I doubt it. You, you, yeah. you just have to like take the blinders off and be like, let him, you know, let him sit in the, the pain a little bit. But he just, I don't know. He just did it the right way. Yeah. He just kept trucking, you know, for sure. And I mean, it's good. It's, you know, it's good for stand up. It's good for it is social, yeah. just in social aspects. The thing that's dangerous is the overcorrection, though. That's what happens. Yeah. Like this past, uh, I mean, you know, the wokeness that everybody is worried about yeah. and the whole thing. Yeah. That was an overcorrection to 
something before. Yeah. And now maybe it's going the pendulum swinging back the other way. And and I, yeah. I think like you when you Michael Richards. On, yeah. You when know? you over <laughs> when you over focus. Oh my god! I, I rewatched that lately, and I was like, but that's like that's like that kind of like. I mean, you can't. It's not even like a what is it? Um, Andy Kaufman esque. Like, oh, he's doing a ca- a very in-depth character yeah. of a racist person like yeah which he tried to kind of pass that off as it looked like he just reached you know just peak. He, yeah he just fucking snapped i gotta be racist i um, can't hold it in anymore it, but but <laughs> as, as a comic it's fun to tread the line of what's acce- accessible yeah you know yeah, yeah, yeah i um just said uh black hat uh like last week i uh i wanted to try a joke that could be perceived as like racist and it was about asian people and it was my 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 cousin's wife is asian so it was like talking about that um and i was like i'm gonna do it at this open mic and yeah. i get there and i've never seen more asian comics at one open mic ever yeah. and i was like i it don't know happens. if tonight's a good night to debut this one yeah but i'm like you know what maybe it is because that's like a good focus group yes because no they're not gonna they're not going to rip my head off. But at the same time, like if you depict yourself as who you are genuinely, I would say 99% of the people can make up the rest and know that you're not trying to hurt them. Yes. You're, yeah, you know, sure. uh, Lu- Louis got a, the way Louis talked about the guy making his coffee in that one bit. Mm. And he throws around the N word and you can just kind of tell that he's not, out to hurt anybody yeah and if you know them already you can make up the you know you can make up the rest in your head and yeah and kind of judge him accordingly yeah it's just like anything else context yeah. and now i mean people have more access to to famous people than ever yeah that you can you can almost get to know them i mean Mo- on, on, a, on a level that we couldn't before right most of them it's it's wild like a lot of them have people who handle their social media account yeah but a good amount of them like just still have it on their phone. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, brother, we've been going a little while. This is good. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long's yeah. it been? Yeah, that's oh, good. Hell yeah, man. I'm happy we're putting a bow on this thing. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. This is great. You got anything uh, fun coming up to plug? Or um, Instagram, whatever. Yeah, check out my Instagram. <laughs> I have a, a, a. I'm on a show at Young Ethel's in Brooklyn nice. on the 21st of March. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, it's uh David uh, Phillips. It's his uh, it's his show there. Should be pretty cool. I think it's called Broccoli and Cheese or something like that. Great. Pretty wacky. Can't go wrong. Yeah, can't go wrong. Those and names. Uh, I just got hit up about possibly. Ne- next month i couldn't make the date it's out in uh, long island oyster bay okay so um there's a monthly out there that i might pop on soon nice I might go this friday but it's a it's about a two-hour train ride out oh, there yeah but i mean anything for comedy at this stage it's like if you say no for anything i'll, I'll do like a you know yeah anything yeah. short of like a fucking child's birthday party or bar yeah. mitzvah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 for sure yeah um, go out to long island for some yeah red, you know what it's like red face i don't know are you are you a um mark norman fan yeah you ever listen like tuesdays with stories uh um, joe list i haven't they're like the uh, the early early episodes like are them just as new york like you know they haven't done what they've done now yeah um so it's probably i think they've been doing it for like 10 years now so it's like eight years ago um and they're stories of like the one-nighters and like taking a two-hour train oh, to like erie pennsylvania fun. you know it's like that's like that's the road dog mentality yeah. you know it's the stuff we wanted like exactly you and i want to yeah hear. exactly yeah. the romanticizing of like Going we're really road. doing it yeah yeah we're really doing it yeah, yeah, yeah especially hearing it from them who end up being somewhere yeah, yeah yeah you're like wow the hard work pays off yeah. don't say no to anything you know For sure put yourself out there all right, man. Hey. Thanks again for coming. For we'll do it again. We'll do great. it again. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Anytime, dude. This is awesome. For sure. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Peace. Later.